Uh, this is Mignette. Um, so I am taking the time to record a workshop or re-record a workshop that I uh, recently did um, with the Temple of Anu uh, in regards to the Kemetic Practitioner's Toolbox and specifically talking about candles. So um, the time went really, really fast. And then um, I got to thinking based on the feedback, hey, why don't I re-record this, put it out there so that other people can um, kind of utilize the information. So um, here we go. <laughs> All righty. All right. So, um, again, as I mentioned, the um, name of this workshop is the Practitioner's Toolbox. And actually, this is a series that I would like to do where I highlight various tools that comedic practitioners or contemporary you utilize in their everyday spiritual practice. So, um, let's get started. So first things first, if you are new to my YouTube channel, to my Instagram, to pretty much me in general, um, my name is Mignette. Um, I am an initiate, as I said earlier, um, of the Temple of Anu. And I have been uh, with the Temple of Anu for, a, I believe, 11 years now. So um, back in 2012, I, I did go and um, complete my initiation into the temple and I received my name. Uh, my name is Minyet Ankh and Ma'at Menta, and that means she who finds pleasure, living in balance and harmony, or Ma'at, um, established on earth. And I was given this name by Nasut Bidi Rasan Kukepper. Um, so after I got my initiation and, you know, still took some classes and things like that, part of being a contemporary um, practitioner is constantly trying to find new ways um, to apply the ancient ancestral wisdom, to apply um, the various thought processes to our lives in uh, the 21st century. So um, I really, really try to concentrate on reading, on researching, and learning about the ancient way of doing things and essentially what does that look like and updated, if you will, and if it even needs updating. So uh, let's go ahead. So my objective or my objectives for today's uh, presentation or workshop is to know what is the difference between Egyptology and Kemeticism. Um, so we're gonna go over like just some basic little history stuff, nothing too deep. Um, the purpose of candles and ritual work, working with various Neturu and their energy and basically like, because you can work with the various Neturu um, with candles and without candles. So I'm just going over the part that has to do with the candles, obviously. Um, different ways candles can be used in ritual and spiritual practice, various classes of candles, um, and different ways that you can prepare, care, and dispose of these ritual candles once you have used them. So um, this actually doesn't really pertain right now simply because this was a live workshop. So this was just going over the etiquette and expectations of the audience. So uh, the part that is still relevant is this section. So as the presentation continues, you will see in the bottom right hand corner, a little PDF icon. And even though you are watching this um, days, months, weeks, possibly even years after this workshop, you can still have access to the free materials I am offering um, within this workshop. All right, so let's get started. So first, um, when I did do the live session, I wanted to take the temperature of the room. And I really, um, at this time, want to encourage you all to think about in your life, what experiences have you already had 
uh, using candles. Um, this can be in general, this can be secularly, this can be within your religious or spiritual upbringing, either one. So the way that we went about this, we used what's called a padlet, where um, multiple people can um, essentially share their thoughts um, with each other simultaneously in live time. So that ended up looking like this. So some of the uh, responses were, you know, birthdays, romantic occasions, um, baths, when the power goes out, camping, and different um, experiences like that. So um, I am hopeful that you all have similar uh, answers for that section too. Um, before we go very, very quickly, I really wanted to take the time to kind of just go over basic vocabulary when it comes to um, comedic living and just being commit to you. We, we do have certain vocabulary that we use, and sometimes we kind of forget that people who are new don't necessarily know or aren't as familiar with these terms. So I wanted to go over these terms before I kind of continue and just assume that you already know what these things are. And as you see, there is a PDF at the bottom. So if you would like a PDF that kind of goes in a little more detail about these vocabulary words or more vocabulary and, and like sayings and things like that, feel free to fill out the form at the end. So Kemet, you can see it sometimes with vowels, sometimes without vowels. Um, this is the ar area in Africa that we can temporarily now call uh, Egypt. Kemeti, that is a person of Kemet or a contemporary practitioner. If we wanted to be plural, we would say Kemetiu. Sesh Merunetcher, this is the written language. Contemporarily, we call this now hieroglyphics. Uh, when we say Nusut Biri, we are talking about the double king. Um, so that is the, uh, if you're familiar, the united crown of lower and upper Kemet, the red and the white crown. Um, so this pharaoh, as we may have learned in high school or grade school, king or monarch, um, but it is represented by the crown that is being worn. Um, BCE, before the common era, simply because BC pertains to Christian canon history and because we are not utilizing that timeline, we do not need to subscribe to those labels of time. So BCE, before the common era. Um, hekau, that means words of power. Natur or natir, uh, netter, I've heard it pronounced different ways. Um, similar to just like in English, we have various dialects and pronunciations for words. Tomato, tomato, same thing. Um, so this is the almighty unseen creative force of the universe. It is the creator of all things. Um, neteru, neteru, again, tomato, tomato, different people pronounce it um, different ways for various reasons. Uh, the various specific manifestations of netter. And then finally, we have the yitmut netir. This is the mother father creator. So there is no... Um, in other religious belief, like that there is one deity um, that is male, there is no one deity that is female. The all, the creator of all is both male and female. This does not mean, I know in 21st century, where, um, you know, trans and LGBTQ plus and all, it doesn't have anything to do with that. It is this, it is the uh, very idea that each one of us has both uh, gendered, uh, qualities. You can um, be assertive, you can be um, aggressive, you can be very outgoing. Like these are considered masculine principles, whereas being more reserved, being quiet, being um, that type of way is considered to be feminine. And again, it doesn't have to do with body parts, it doesn't have to do with patriarchy or anything like that. Um, this is pre those systems. Um, if you need or would like more information, I would recommend you possibly look into reading um, the Kabilion, where it, it, it kind of gets into gendered principles like that. Um, all right, so Norman D. Ellis, um, in her book, Awakening Osiris, which that is like really one of my pet peeves, util utilizing, um, utilizing Greek terminology, 
It is not uh, authentic, therefore I usually do not use it, but because that is what she named her book, I don't wanna, you know, kinda confuse people. So her book is called Awakening Osiris, the Egyptian Book of the Dead. Again, super not accurate, but again, that's what she named it. Um, so if you are familiar with the Pert M. Heru, the Pert M. Heru is a somewhat, I don't even wanna say somewhat, it is an advanced text. It is not for beginners. It has very many layers and this isn't to um, offend anyone or insult anyone. It just is what it is. Um, you have to be very familiar with the customs, the culture, the history, um, to get context and you know, even not being a practitioner and reading the book, you will miss certain things simply because that is not your belief system. So, you know, certain dots will not get connected. So if you do want to read that book, I definitely recommend reading uh, Normandy Ellis's book, just because it kind of gives you a little bit of context and understanding. And so then, you know, when you read the original text, it just kind of makes a little more sense um, and it helps you kind of sort through it. It just makes it a little easier. But um, even then, I would definitely recommend like that's a book you have to read a little bit, put it down, read it, come back and things like that. But um, anywho, in her book, uh, one of the quotations that she um kind of, she tries to like update it and put it into contemporary language. So that's one of the, like I said, why I like that book. Uh, my body is but wax and wick for flame. When the candle burns out, the light shines elsewhere. So um, it's this idea that um, it is not necessarily about a physical candle, but again, it's what the candle represents, which I will get into. So throughout different spiritual systems, we see a multitude of um, religions and, and groups of people that utilize candles for very different and similar reasons. So we have uh, Jewish people, we have Muslim people, we have Hindu people, we have Buddhist people, we have uh, people who practice Santeria, we have many different kinds of people and Kamites are just like other spiritual systems where we use candles. <laughs> Um, so symbolically, um, as you all saw with, you know, just that opening question, um, the symbolism and meaning uh, we related to candles. We were learned, we related, um, we, I'm sorry, we related to birthdays. We related to romance. We related to relaxation. We related to memorial service when people pass away and memor and uh, memorializing people. So, um, we have very many different uses for candles. Specifically within um, spiritual systems, usually candles are used to remind us of divine light, to remind us of the light that we have within. Um, it is very conducive for prayer and meditation and healing. Uh, anyone who has taken a ritual or spiritual bath um, or even just a bath after a long day of work. <laughs> like those candles just kind of set a different tone and put you at a different vibration. So to ensure that we are um, paying more attention to the comedic application, I wanted to take a moment to just talk about the Sesh Madhu Nature when it comes to candles. We know that this is something that existed back then because there were words and there were texts that talked about it. Like if it, if it didn't exist, it wouldn't be in the vocabulary or lexicon. So um, these are just five um, words that I found. There are others, but these are the ones that I chose to present. So the first uh, word is um, gemhet. The next one is wa'awu. The one at the bottom, kabu. And on the other side, we have, I'm like, I got to prepare myself, Khebsa. Khebsa. So um, if you're familiar with uh, what we would call tr Middle Eastern, they have that like kind of sound. Um, I'm not a linguist, so I don't know the technical term for it, but it, that's what you're doing for that KH sound. So Khebsa. Um, so they both pronounce differently. I mean, I'm sorry, they're both pronounced the same way, but they are spelled differently. Um, and we have 
things like that in English where we use the same pronunciation but just spell it differently. All right, so further, uh, when it comes to the Kometi and candles specifically, because it is ancient history, candles didn't look the same. Candles did not look the same at all, like to have wax and a glass thing and this, and that, you know, like that's technology. So um, what the original candles did look like were similar to like rush lights, where it was a molded, um, like out of clay, and they would put oil or animal fat and inside with some um, something that smelled good because who wants to burn some animal fat? Ain't nobody trying to smell that all day. It's nasty. <laughs> or tasty, you know, whatever, if you're hungry. Um, so you put it in there, they put the wick, and then they use that to light, to do their rituals, etc. They also um, would use incense, which is very well known. So, I mean, unfortunately, I'm sticking to candles, but I kind of like layered that in there. So incense is part of that too. So here is more evidence of, again, candles, incense, and just, again, this use of fire for spiritual purposes or um, controlled fire for spiritual purposes. So we can um, specifically look into the Pert M. Haru. So, um, and I know, like, I know some people are going to kill me for rolling my R's with that. <laughs> but the Pert M. Haru has to, um, it was a very individualized text. There was no one Pert M. Haru. There was this canon of text, and then it was specifically applied to the person as they needed. Therefore, this specific Pert M. Haru is not the usual one that is thought of, which is the papyrus of Ani. This is the papyrus of uh, Nebsini. So um, this papyrus is from the Bronze Age, which is the 18th dynasty, um, specifically the first dynasty within the New Kingdom. And this is approximately the 15th century BCE. So when we focus in on um, chapter 137b, we see the um, picture there. We also see, obviously, all of the Sashmandu nature around it. <laughs> so this specifically, is like the whole papyrus is talking about, again, using light, using fire in a controlled way, um, as well in, as incense to give protection and setting light to a vessel um, for ritualistic purposes once someone passes away, which I will kind of like get into that a little more later. So again, we're referring to the text where like this was a thing that, that they did. So the reason why this is very, very important is because there are a lot of people, whether it be on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, that um, call themselves Kemites, but they um, don't necessarily practice the spiritual system. They research, they read, they appreciate. This is an Egyptologist. This, you know, this is uh, an academic or intellectual movement. So if a person is um, being academic and intellectualizing and not necessarily talking about the spiritual, metaphysical applications to everyday life, that is how you can tell the difference between an Egyptologist and a, uh, a practitioner. <laughs> I don't know, I had like a little space in there like, what? Okay, so um, Egyptology was I don't even want to say it was started in in Europe like it technically wasn't because even within ancient Kemet um as time because it was thousands of years as time went on they would go back and study their own past so it's not like this is just something Europeans came along and did um but you know they did it within their time period then the Greeks were trying to study then you know other um Western Asian cultures came in and conquered and, you know, and studied and things like that. So, um, but Egyptology in its incarnation, the way we know it today does come out of Europe, specifically the late 1800s. So again, as I said, this is much different than um, 
cometicism or current commit to you because uh, these are people who study the academics they they study the metaphysics and then they again try to apply it and use the ancient wisdom to guide their everyday life in an effort to uphold the 42 tepra and ma'at so um this is the major difference if a person is not talking about ritual if they are not if they are just talking about book knowledge that's cool that's respectable i appreciate you because lord knows i can't read all the books in the world so i mean you know it's a help but um you know it, it is very important to understand that distinction so when we're talking about religion and spirituality in ancient Kemet specifically, um, it's a popular view simply because of the texts that are kind of put out there that, oh, like, you know, it was all about death. It was all about the afterlife, blah, blah, blah. I'm sure all of you know that that is not the case. <laughs> there were uh, medical papyrus that are out there. There are um, astrological um, calendars. I'm, I'm sorry, not astrological, um, astronomy, not astrology, sorry. <laughs> um, so there are many other, uh, like architecture, medicine, there, there's just so many different other types of papyrus out there, but the ones that mostly get talked about are the ones that have to do with the afterlife. Um, but again, this idea of um, going to the West and transitioning, it was just another uh, life. It was not like you're going up, like going up somewhere. It's like, yes, you had to traverse and, and go through different tests and things like that. But again, it's reflective of what kind of life are you living here and now? Were you trying to uphold Ma'at? And, you know, if you're doing what you need to do and you're living life as a decent person, you get to live again later as a decent ancestor. Like, it's just a continuation like uh -huh. <laughs> so at this point if this was live i would say you know if you have any questions put them in the chat if you have any questions you know unmute yourself let's talk but this is pre-recorded <laughs> so <laughs> i'm gonna go ahead so when we're thinking about candles for um, the 21st century, we want to think about our candle quality. Um, there are many, many, many different types of wax that um, is out there to use for your candle. So the most popular is paraffin wax. Um, it's very versatile, um, you know, but it does come from um, crude oil. So um, personally, I'm not gonna lie, I still use paraffin wax candles. Like I'm not all like, oh no, that's beneath me. Like, no, like it, that's what I can afford. So that's what I, you know, but I try to do the best I can, get the best quality I can, because again, this is for ritual. So my intention is to give the best that I can. Um, since it is something that does come from crude oil, I do try to make sure that when I do burn the candle, so you see them, burning back there um and that's the tall ones they are paraffin um i do have a window open so i'm just not sitting in a room with it burning 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 the other um wax that's out there that is like oh maybe that might not be the super most natural would be gel wax so any candle that you see that like looks clear or looks like water or gel gel wax and it um it's made from a combination of resin and mineral oil, which again, same thing, I would recommend just keeping your windows open um, just in case, because it's not like there have been extensive studies on, on that type of thing, but just as a precaution. So the more natural waxes, we have beeswax, which we know um, in the later uh, dynasties that beeswax was used after the rush lights um, so that was the first kind of wax that was used as an actual candle and something to be burned and things like that. We have palm wax, um, which again, it's a natural oil, comes from palm oil. Uh, we got bayberry wax that actually didn't become popular until like, you know, 13 colonies, ye old establishment of America. Sorry, my inner, t my, my inner history teacher. 
them wanting to come out and play real quick. All right. <laughs> and then finally, soy wax, which um, again, if you look behind me, like the shorter glass candles, those are soy wax candles made from soy. Mm -hmm. Um, you do want to be mindful of the soy wax candles just because uh, a lot of times they are blended with other waxes. So um, you might want to ask or just read the labels when you're buying them um, because sometimes they are mixed with paraffin wax blend. So um, just be careful. So the next thing we want to talk about is wick quality. So again, it's all about your budget. It's all about, you know, what's out there. And I fully believe in trying to be as educated as possible. And again, we I would like to think that as we do ritual, we want to give our best, put our best foot forward. And we don't want to do things out of ignorance. So that's why we're doing this part right now. So the first thing is uh, a zinc core. Um, used to be a lead core so you know this when you see a wick and it stands straight up and technically if you look like down at it you'll see like a little gray dot in the middle that's how you know it is a zinc core um wick same thing as as i said with the paraffin wax because it comes from crude oil so because it's burning zinc leave a window open you know again no judgment if that's what you can afford if that's what you want if that's what you like um you know, I would just recommend maybe having a window open or just being well ventilated. Uh, the next that we have is the cotton core. So that's the bottom all the way to the left. Next, followed by a paper core, a hemp core, then core less, and then a wooden wick, which seems to be very popular. I'm not gonna lie, I personally don't really care for wooden wicks just because I feel like they don't burn and, um, they don't burn all the way down to the bottom. Not that they don't burn, they do. But they don't burn all the way to the bottom. I always, it always kind of like ends early and then I have like this little pool of wax that can never be used because <laughs> the wick doesn't go all the way down. So I do want to make mention that uh, when you do have the coreless, and I'm like, let me see if I can um, show this real quick. Stop presenting to see if I can try to. All right, so this is um, an offset candle. This is one of the soy ones. Um, you can tell I use candles a lot. And for people who are into candle stuff, you see that soot. So doing work. Uh, but anyway, my point in that is that you can kind of see right there that, um, can you see it on this side? So you see how it kind of like curls over itself please make sure that you, um, before you light the candle, like so if you use it, you cover it, you never blow out a candle when you're using it for ritual purposes. Like this is totally not like birthdays. Um, the idea is when you light a candle and you light that wick and you put that intention and you're doing all of that, you don't wanna blow it out because it's, it's like you're getting rid of the energy. So you always want to cover it and smother it and to let it go out. If you are lighting incense, it's the same thing. You don't just and let it go. Like no, if you wanna wave it, if you wanna just let it sit, it eventually burns out. Um, but anywho, so my point is when you have that coreless wick, please make sure that you trim it because that's another contributing factor to all that uh, you know black soot on the top. Um, I know that people, you know, say it has different spiritual meanings and then how thick it is and all that other stuff, which I'm not saying isn't, you know, true, but I definitely notice that when I don't cut the wick that that happens way more often. Just saying. All right, back to the presentation, y'all. Okay. Okay, so we have gone over wicks. Let me put that down. So again, if this was live, I'll be like, hey, y'all, y'all got any questions for me? What, you know, back and forth. So um, if you do have some questions, you can put them in the comments section. Um, I Like I said, I'm gonna be uploading this to YouTube. So if you're watching this on YouTube, um, you can put it in the comments section and I will definitely um, answer and get back to you. All right, so next, choosing your candle. So before you even get started, before your ritual work is a twinkle in your eye, you want to sit and think about it. 
You may want to take a day, two, an hour, two, what have you, to pray and meditate on the following questions. So uh, think about uh, or identify who needs assistance. Maybe you need assistance. Maybe you need guidance. Maybe you need clarity or something like that. Uh, but who? Start with the who. Um, you can uh, think like, oh, you know what? My mom is, you know, just got diagnosed with such and such, or my father just lost his job, or, you know, my grandparent just passed away, or, you know, like, who are you thinking of needs this prayer, meditative, uh, ritual and spiritual work. Next, what is the need? What is the want? What is the desire? So this, you really want to try to connect with that vibration. You really want to think like, do I need to cultivate something? Do I need to connect with something? Do I need to embody a whole energy? Because all of those are very different things. Um, or do you just need direct assistance? Like, you know how people say, take the wheel. Like, do you need the Netaru to come through and drive for the next couple miles um, to help you get to your destination safely? <laughs> like, do you need that? Because sometimes we do. And sometimes we just need the Netaru to be in the back seat. And sometimes we need the Netaru on the phone so that they can be like, yeah, turn, make that next left. So what is the need? What is the desire? Then next, why is this a need or a desire? Because we all want things. We all say we need things. We all desire things, but that don't mean that's really what's for us. So, um, and I know this is like kind of trivial, but it's not like, like, you know, I need chocolate cake. I want chocolate cake. I desire chocolate cake. <laughs> the scale says I don't need no chocolate cake. So, I mean, I'm using a little bit of humor, but you're, you're not going to go and do ritual for chocolate cake. But, um, you know, is this something that you truly need? Is it is it going to lead to your positive positive evolution? Is it going to help another person? Is it within ma'at? And literally read down all those 42 and see if what your intention is and what you want to do this work around fits in with the 42. If it is, go, go for it. Get started. Keep watching the video. If not, stop, sit. Maybe you gotta do some EFT. Maybe you gotta, you know, pray some more for, you know, something else or what, like for things to shift. Maybe you need some Kepra in your life. Like, need you to move this over here, move over there. We gotta transform. <laughs> um, and then finally, how do I intend to use this candle? What is its specific function? Some people, especially depending on what your um, religious and spiritual background was before this point, um, you don't think about the function. You just kind of do it. You just kind of, oh, you feel it. You this, you that. And sometimes, especially when something is new, understanding like what that function is helps bring you another level of clarity and connection, which is very important. All right. So there are many different types of candles and many different applications and how you use them. Um, but I am only going over four basics. Like this is supposed to be like a basic overview. Uh, so you have your invocation candle. This represents the Netur, Neturu and their specific energy. You have an astral uh, candle that represents you personally, or if you're if you're if the work is for someone else it represents the other person personal wishes desires all of that it, it, it you'll see when i get there <laughs> uh offertory so if you got a new job and you like do i need to like <laughs> let me light this candle let me pour some life agents let me give some stuff on my altar to say thank you because like i've been doing my work and you came through and i appreciate you and i love you so you know give that give back that reciprocity all right, and then finally, memorial. This is uh, around ancestor work. This can be recently departed ancestors as well as lineage ancestors or even societal ancestors. I'll get to that. So invocation. Invocation candles, um, they're traditionally used, um, like, so if you have an altar and you've set up an altar or you wish to set up an altar, this is usually like your focal point to your whole altar. It's like what everything is centering around. Um, specifically, like I personally uh, prefer statues and not for nothing, I'm a very, very visual person. Some like, so what my needs are may not necessarily be 
um, your needs and maybe you don't identify with that and that's cool, that's fine. Um, but I usually like a, a statue and, and um, an invocation candle. I, I kind of like, it's like my art to me, like it's that balance. <laughs> um, so again, the purpose can range. Um, it can be to petition and specifically ask for something, call upon um, that Neturu or the Neturu's energy, connect with them. Um, but generally speaking, uh, that is your focal point. That is what you're focusing your work on. Excuse me. So, uh, comedic invocation candles. So, um, primarily, uh, there are some Etsy stores that do offer some candles out there. Um, there are different shrines and temples that um, offer some candles. So um, I would definitely say check out your local um, shrine or temple uh, or perhaps even Etsy. Like I personally get my candles through Temple of Anu just because that's where I go. Uh, so the candles that they have look like this. So you have the image, which is made by um, one of the initiates. Um, he does the visuals and the artwork for uh, all of the Neturu candles. So you have the name of the, um, it, well, this is a female, so Netert. Um, you have a picture because again, I'm visual. I like pictures, some people don't, that's fine. Um, and then it also has at the bottom down here what the actual energy is. So for Het Haru, love, healing, harmony, abundance, um, you can do this for self-love work. You can do this if you're working on your self-esteem. You can use it if you're uh, needing to heal your inner child, if you need to heal uh, relationships between you and your parents, you and your brothers and sisters, if you're trying to heal old traumas and stuff that's happened to you, like with any of her come in clutch. So, um, and then what's nice about this also is that it has like a blurb. So again, if you're brand spanking new, you don't know that much, you're not super familiar with the Neturu, um, it does have something like a little explanation on there for you. And then obviously never leave burning candles unattended. I have been super guilty of that and shamefully so because I have literally in my life set my house on fire three times. Do not be like me. This is one of the reasons why I actually really like these because they're always in glass. <laughs> like I'm very, very wary of burning candles that are not surrounded by glass. And, um, outside of this like i have those glass things that you get at dollar tree and i put all my candles on top of it just in case so um please practice fire safety especially depending on what energy you're using and what you know sometimes you might be praying and you pray a little hard and i'm not gonna lie that's literally how one time i caught my house on fire i was talking to segment and segments like word <laughs> be careful <laughs> i'm just saying <laughs> So that's her, her room. Uh, then there's also this one. So I just wanted to kind of illustrate the fact that there are both male and female um, Neturu candles. So again, we got Haru, the name up here. We got the imagery. And then we have like the energy. Uh, so strength, willpower, victory, success, um, trying to cultivate your highest self, um, I get, you know how sometimes, I mean, sometimes I will use it. So like in, in a masculine fashion, like ascending my throne, um, establishing, you know, that piece of me, although I somewhat feel like that might be a little bit of a Nassar, a little bit of like an Osset, a little, you know, so anyway, and to who? So same thing, you got the description on the back. And again, don't leave it burning if you're not there. If you leave, even if you're just going down to move the cars around or you running down to the corner store, like, please just cover it up and then relight it when you come back. Like, please don't leave them. Uh, so the other um, ones that Temple of Anu does have, and this is simply because after a while, I got tired of like, like I burn resin, I burn incense, um, but sometimes I don't want to burn and have the smoke. So um, there are also these, these are the scented candles. Um, they are very, very strong. Like literally you do not need a whole lot. <laughs> you can burn this and your whole house. Like, I mean, I know I have two, but legit that's just for y'all. Like I literally only burn one scented candle at a time just because they are so strong. Like I could walk to the other side of my apartment and I will smell it like it, they're very, very strong. So 
same thing where um, you don't necessarily have the imagery, but you do have the Sesh Medu Nature. They do have like the energy on there. Um, these candles, if I'm not mistaken, will last me, I wanna say, if I'm using them sparingly, um, I have been able to stretch them for two months. If I'm not being sparing, about a week and a half of almost constant burn. Um, the tall um, candles, I wanna say similar where, um, don't break them now, um, that if you burn the tall candles almost consistently, you'll get maybe like a week and a day, a week and two days out of it. If you use it on and off, then it'll obviously go longer. So the other type of candle, and I didn't want to show the other one I have, well, this person comes has different sizes. Um, so there, I in general, I love scented candles, uh, but this one is not scented. This one comes from uh, Free Spirit uh, Delicacies. Uh, she is out of Kentucky. It's a woman-owned um, business, and she creates these candles. Um, so if you are into, um, what is it that, if I'm not mistaken, I don't remember if chakras are Hindu or Buddhist. I know I know it's like an Asian um, thing. But um, so anyways, <laughs> I'm like going over on tangent. Come back, Mignette, come back. So the reason why I like this candle specifically is that it, um, if you are trying to work on your whole self, um, and she does have ones that just specifically concentrate on one chakra, or I know as some Kometi say, Arit, if you are working on that specific energy, you will get a candle that is all that one color. Um, but the reason why I like her, and unfortunately these are not scented, but um, they're hand poured. Um, I do believe it is soy, if I'm not mistaken. But the thing that I really like about it is she grows her own herbs and then she uses the herbs uh, that associate with that specific arit or chakra. She uses crystal, like this one's like kind of big. So, yikes. I'm like, I don't wanna drop it too bad. So like, you see that right there? So she puts like crystals in it. She puts um, sage in it, like a smudge. So as it burns, you got the herbal magic. You got the whole, you know, little mix thing going on there. So um, these are smaller. So just in comparison, so y'all can see, they are smaller. Um, but again, it's a different function. So depending on your intention, what it is you're trying to do, um, yeah, she does also have like smaller ones that are like that big. Um, so you don't necessarily have to get all big candles. She does have smaller ones too. Um, so yeah, spiritual candles. So when it comes to your invocation candles, these are the most popular Neturu um, that people usually work with. So you got Empu, Amun, Asar, Aset, um, Bas, or some people say Bastets. Bess, Jehudi, some people say Tahuti, Hapi, Haru, Haru, or Het Haru, Keper, Kanum, Kansu, Ma'at, Mantu, Min, Nebet Het, Nefertum, Nekbet, Neith, uh, Newt, Noon, Pata, Ra, uh, Satesh, Sekmet, which again, like I said, if you're trying to work with, with Sekmet, you better be careful because, like, <laughs> legit. How, how like house caught on fire. <laughs> Be careful. Um, Shashat, Sebek, Spadet, or Sopdet, um, Ta'ert, and Wajet, or Ujat. People say, you know, like that. So um, you'll see that there is a PDF there. So if you uh, need or would like more information as far as like the different natural rules, what their different energies are, um, you know, so you can kind of help determine like, okay, well, what kind of Neturu do I need to be trying to inv um, invite into my space? So that's the purpose of that specific PDF. All right, so next we have astral candles. Um, so astral candles are all about you, or if your work is centered on someone else, it's all about them. <laughs> so 
It can be a candle that is their favorite color. If it's a scented candle, it could be their favorite smell. It can be, what if they're really into astrology, it could be something based on their astrology. Um, if you are uh, close to that person as a comedic practitioner. So um, I can't speak for all temples because all temples are um, a little bit different. So just like other religions that um, have different uh, denominations, if you will. So um, so does the um, do comedic practitioners and community. Like <laughs> we're not all exactly the same. We all believe generally this the same core, but how we practice and what it looks like and how we pronounce things and how we practice how like celebrate holidays and traditions like it'll vary depending on what temple and shrine that you're part of so um some if you'll notice that some like asara sets if you're familiar with sacred woman if you're familiar with raseki temple of anu new set temple like everybody some temples will say, no, these colors are for this Neturu, and other colors, you'll go to another temple and it'll be a totally different color. So, um, but anyways, my point in saying all of this is that um, in at least my experience, if a person gets a reading and it says like what Neturu is, they're kind of like guiding um deity, if you will, through this life, maybe you might want to consider getting a candle. So um, that energy, like you're making that connection. So like me, I have a reading, I have three specific Neturu um, that guide my life, my destiny and things like that. And then I have a different deity that kind or Neturu or Netur, sorry, that um, kind of governs my name. Um, so these are all the different energies that kind of surround me. So if someone was trying to, um, I guess, pray for me, they might want to get those specific Neturu or one of those Neturu to say, hey, yo, your girl need help. So I'm going to burn this candle for her. <laughs> So, um, and like I said, colors and scents, like the best thing is intuition. So if a smell, like if suddenly, like, I mean, I don't know if y'all can tell my favorite color is pink. You saw how short that was? Like, sis, ain't nothing there. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I'm a focus man, yeah. Um, so, um, so if it was, again, using myself as an example, I would get pink candles. I would, my second favorite color is red. Um, I prefer gold over silver. I, you know, like, so if I was just thinking like that, or there are certain smells, like I like musk smells or very, very flowery smells. Um, so, you know, that might be, you know, like all of that will be taken into account. So the next colors and their meanings. So we want to be mindful of like, if I want to pray for healing for my uncle, I may not necessarily get a red candle for him if that's my intention. Like if it's a specific thing, like I want healing for that person. This person is really having a hard time. I need them to have peace. Like don't get them no red, don't get no red candle for them. <laughs> like be very mindful. And again, the more you know, the better choices you'll make, the more powerful uh, the connection and ritual will be. So again, you see that PDF. So if you want any um, information on that, you can uh, reach out on that. So next we have offertory. Like I said, offertory candles are all about um, really, really um, trying to connect with very, very specific requests or um, being thankful for something that has already happened. Or if you're doing like manifestation work, you're already thinking like, do I not do I Jehuti for helping me today uh, do this presentation? Like I felt like blah, blah, blah. And you really helped me get the right words and speak with a wise mind to the audience. And da, 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 da. So I'm gonna light this candle and I hope that you, you accept my prayers and yada, yada. Like that's how it would kind of go. So um, if you are asking for something, um, you want to choose a time period. So 24 hours, three, three days, five days, seven days, a month, six months, three months, like pick a specific time that you want to do this work with 
excuse me, that you want to do this work and um, give yourself a time every day during that time period to sit, light that candle, pray, meditate, like pray on what it is you're looking for, pray on that clarity. If you need clarity, pray on, please open the way and pool. Like I, I, you know, I'm not happy with my job. I know it's COVID, but I need to find a new job. I, you know, I just, I feel so stressed, yada, yada, yada. Please help open the way. And then after you say your prayers, you pour your libations, you give your, like I said, you light the candle, you offer it, you sit and you meditate and you receive, like what is Empu gonna say back to you you know, so again, it's that reciprocity back and forth. And then next we have memorial candles. So it was so important to remember your ancestors. Um, like that was a huge thing. And even throughout Africa, like um, in various cultures, that's a really, really big thing being remembered. It's this idea, if you are living a maotic life, you are able to transition and go to the happy place and you can come back and see your family and stuff like that and visit with them and commune with them and they will still remember you and they will still call your name. And um, so that's this idea of like, that's how you live life eternal because your family members remember you. We remember our family members so they never die. It is only when we stop calling their names that they they go through that second death. So if you've ever seen the movie Coco, um, that's kind of like a very similar um, way of looking at it. And that's like a, a contemporary illustration. So um, I personally um, have had it put on my heart that I want to start creating memorial candles uh, for myself. Um, again, because I'm visual, like usually when you're doing memorial candles, usually memorial candles are just plain white candles. Um, you can get the pull out candles if you wish, uh, or just a plain white in the glass. It's up to you how you want. But, um, again, I want to remember my ancestors. Like, um, so I am, am creating a line of memorial candles, um, for my own. Um, purposes, but um, it is my hope, hopefully in the next couple of months, that I am able to offer um, to others being able to have personalized memorial candles. So like if you're getting married and you want to remember your mother or father or grandparents or whomever, um, you can have a candle, it'll have the prayer directly on it, it'll have the Seshmedu Necha right on there. Like it would be saged, it would be um, like anointed and prayed over and you know infused with positive energy. Um, so just because it's so incredibly important, the more that I learn about taking care of our ancestors and feeding them and talking to them, um, it, it's just very, very, very important. So um, if you are ever, I guess, interested in something like that or somebody recently passes away and, you know, people usually get them shirts. Um, but if you want to get like personalized memorial candles or something like that, that is a project that um, I am hoping to launch within the next um, few months. So um, you can always go to my, uh, my blog or my Instagram and you will see any updates there. <laughs> All right. So again, if we were live and in person, I'd be like, hey, y'all, y'all got any questions? But we not. <laughs> so again, if you got any questions, put them in the chat. I'm not in the chat. I'm so sorry. In the comments. So spiritual candle care. And we are like starting to round and, and come to the um, close of the presentation. So spiritual candle um, care, you have to cleanse your candle, like no lie. When I bought this candle, and I'm not, because I haven't used it yet, like you see it's new. So when I bought this, um, <laughs> I, I actually like I buy like a bunch of candles at once so um, but I don't clean them until I'm getting ready to use them so the idea is who was holding that box of candles before you got them who stocked it on the shelf like what was their energy looking like or you know like maybe they was having a bad day or maybe they just you know got 
got yelled at or, or reprimanded at work or, you know, maybe somebody just passed away. So their energy is connected, like everything. That's why they say you'd be very careful of who touches you or who does your hair and things like that because of that energy transference. I mean, um, we learned that in science class in high school about energy. Energy never dies. It just transfers. So, you know, it's the same thing. Like my energy, if my, if I have poo poo energy, I'm going to put my poo poo energy on your candle. And now you just, you can't just throw it up on the altar because now you put poo poo energy on your altar. Like you don't want to do that. That's no bueno. <laughs> All right. So, um, you might want to, um, Sage the candle. I'm like, I keep putting it down. I might as well just keep it. So when you have the candle, if you got some sage, you can, you know, light the sage and just hold it like that. Do the sides. I usually uh, like to do things in fours. So I usually sage one, two, like go back and forth four times, front and back four times and hold it. And then before I even light the candle, before I even do anything, I hold it upside down and I'll let the smoke clear it out. So sage clears all energy, good, bad, whatever. So this, it's like a, a energetic reset for the candle. So uh, if you don't have sage, um, you can also use Florida water. Um, you might wanna be careful with this because it does have alcohol in it. So if you put it up here, please make sure that you wait, like you don't just pour it in there. Oh my God, what if that was open? I would have been so upset. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway, you'll just pour it on there because there's alcohol in there, and then you're gonna have a pool of alcohol, and then, oof, then you're really gonna have some Sekhmet fireworks. Don't do that. <laughs> but um, I would say, like, you know, put a little bit, like, pour a little bit in your hands, rub it together, like, you know, you can kind of, if you want to, like, kind of say a prayer or something like that. Um, over it while it's in your hand. If you want to like sprinkle it like that, you could do that. Um, and then finally, also like Temple of Anu has this liquid altar. So you can like just spray it all over. So any of those are pretty good. If you want to bury it in salt, salt, you know, takes out impurities, you could do that. Uh, any of those things are very helpful. Um, intention setting. So again, um, if I am... Okay, I'm like, let me, I'm gonna just, just go ahead and use the Het Haru candle. So if I am intention setting, me personally, I literally sit and I look at the imagery. I think about the name. I might sing a Hesi or say Heka'u, words of power, um, sing like a, a sacred chant or something to just kind of connect with her energy. Um, and then say like, well, what is it I'm looking for? What help do I really need with Heru? Like, you know, Heru, you see, you could pray. You've already cleaned it off. Heru, I'm lighting this candle. I really need you to help me. I need to work with my inner child. I need to do some shadow work and I'm scared and I need you to help show me how um, to utilize divine love and really, you know, move myself through this process. I want to overcome, I want whatever, like, well, you know, stuff like that. So that's how you, you know, put your intentions on there. There is no wrong or right way to do that. Uh, you just kind of, you know, speak from your heart. You know, talk to the Neturu like, I don't want to say, don't talk to them like your best friend because sometimes we cuss out our best friends and sometimes our best friends ain't even really our best friends. Like, people be toxic. So don't say that. Your ideal best friend, your most respectable and loving best friend. Let me be specific. <laughs> That's how you want to talk to the net to rule. Be real. Keep it real with them. You can, <laughs> if you can't keep it real with anybody else, you know, they always say, keep it real with yourself. Keep it real with the net to rule. Keep just, it is what it is. You ain't hiding. You can't hide. <laughs> All right. So again, before you use it, you can also do what's called inscribing. So like I said before, I usually just have glass candles, but um, sometimes if I do have a certain intention or a person, I will kind of take a pen and write their name in, in the wax. Um, or I can write like symbol, like I might put an ankh in there or you know, any kind of symbols that just kind of help me connect again more to what it is I'm working on. So again, the candle will go out. If you are working on the energy, the candle goes out, but you're not done with that energy, that's okay. You start all over again and you light a new candle. But what do you do with the old ones? 
So this is one of the old ones. It is thoroughly done. <laughs> Actually, no, wait, I got another one that's thoroughly, thoroughly. Yeah, this one's thoroughly, thoroughly done. <laughs> but um, so the most important thing before disposing of your candle is you want to say like this one was a never hat candle and i already did it i just i already released my energy off of it but um i wanted to save it so that i could show you all um so you know do i never had you know i've really been trying to work on that energy of self mastery you know you really helped me kind of master my my physical space i got such and such done and i am so thankful for your assistance in that and your guidance in that and making sure that i was diligent and disciplined to do that okay so i you know i say you know say whatever comes to your heart thank you know thank and so you know like so i now release you um, and thank you for all that you've done. I removed the labels simply because like, to me, it's just disrespectful to throw the net out in the garbage. Like, bro, no. Um, but again, it's most important that you release the energy first, then remove the labels. I go so far as I put them in a plastic bag and I actually break the glass. So that, that to me symbolically again, cause I'm visual, I just break it and totally release it and let it go. Um, so, um, and again, take off the front, take off the back. If you have one of those candles where it's like painted on, um, if there's a way for you to kind of just uh, get that off, if you can't, just breaking the candle, breaking the glass is fine. Um, yeah, for that. Um, and then if you're using the candle where there is no glass, please, you can bury the wax if you like. Um, I know people who have done that. Please do not flush the wax. You are going to get a bill. Do not do that. <laughs> like that is not good for plumbing. Don't do that. So, um, yes, if you just are using one, uh, a candle that has no glass to it, you can bury it. You can uh, break it into smaller pieces to release it and then, um, dispose of it. I also don't like to throw candles directly into my regular degular garbage just because i'm like oh you know like that's a netta rule like i'm trying to have more respect more reverence for the energy and, and my spiritual work so i want to just throw it so i always put it in its own bag and then dispose of it um versus just throwing it in my regular trash all right so again like i said if we was in person this would be a stop point <laughs> so um, any final discussion, I very much um, invite you all to engage with me over on uh, Facebook. I do have a group, Comedic Living in the 21st Century, so you can definitely come over there and engage. Um, we have another group that's called Comedic Single, so if you are looking for a divine mate who is concentrating on living a life of ma'at, you can join us over in that group. Um, me personally, uh, you can follow me on Instagram and or YouTube, all of them, one of them, whatever floats your boat, that's fine. Uh, so my website is mignetteankemaat.com. Um, on Instagram, I am at mignetteankemaat. And then, like I said, on Facebook, Comedic Living in the 21st Century and Comedic Singles. Um, so... At this point, if you look in the description on um, YouTube, I will put the link uh, for um, your feedback, please. I definitely would love to hear your feedback. Like this is uh, the practitioner toolbox is a series. So if there is another spiritual tool you would like me to kind of like go over like the comedic way of doing it, uh, please feel free to use the form um, to kind of communicate that. So just to kind of show what it looks like. This is the actual Google form. So, you know, and please be honest, if I missed something, if I didn't answer a question or something like that, please feel free to let me know because that will make me better in the future. Um, like, were your expectations fulfilled? Like, was it organized? Um, things like that. And then here all the way at the bottom, if you'd like, you can add your email. Um, if you have any other topics that you would like to hear or something like there, um, I'm sorry, no, that says feedback. Blah, 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 blah. I know it's one of them. I'm sorry. So, um, 
if you want any of the resources, you, you put that and you can click the different boxes to say which ones you want. Um, and I will send them out to you via email and share that with you. So um, really and truly do I, I appreciate um, all of you for watching this presentation, this workshop that I did. Um, for the temple of a new the uh, actual workshop was called practitioners toolbox but it was part of the Kemet in the cloud series which is a virtual series um just going over basics uh, specifically for people who are interested in the comedic le legacy who uh, are new to the comedic legacy uh, and things like that and um, it just fits perfectly with uh, my personal mission which is comedic living in the 21st century like what does that look like you know like there are so many ways of living there's so much misinformation um what does it look like? And um, you know, I'm not a priest. I'm I'm not a priestess. I'm just a regular person. Um, I work a nine to five, and then I do this because it's my passion project. So, um, I would love for it to grow <laughs> because I do feel very passionately about it. But it is what it is. So, um, do I do I for your feedback? Do I for your attention? Do I for um, just everything for your engagement? I truly appreciate each and every one of you, and keep striving, keep working towards living in my art every day. Amatu um, panatir sawatu menten panatir audwa makati paharu. Give yourself to nature daily. Keep yourself for nature daily, and may tomorrow be as today. Please stay blessed, stay safe. Shami Matab. We the reflection of our ancestors. We'd like to thank you for the building blocks you left us. This is your spirit possessed to show you blessed us. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.